So Sean, as an actor who stepped behind the scenes to direct, can you talk to me a little bit about what that contributes to your style and how you see this story? Again, I, I acted in my youth and I always had this sense that I was like 5% too self-conscious to be a great actor. But I could always see what was required of the performance. So I really enjoy getting into it with my actors and really kind of digging in and honing that script and building the character on the page and then building that performance on the screen. So talk to me about this kid, Dakota. Yeah. Who I think is absolutely amazing. We've been talking with a bunch of the reporters and he seemed to be sort of the perfect amount of cute with no yes. obnoxious and yes. great chops. And where did you find him? I found him in the suburbs of Toronto. He sent in an audition. I thought I saw something. And you know, it's interesting because he has the acting chops. Mm -hmm. He has the talent. But a part like this is so central and so critical to the quality of the movie that I knew I needed something other than acting skill. Right. I needed an inherent, natural authenticity. I love that. That really would make you root for the kid and not be cluttered by too much acting. Right. And Dakota had that. It's that thing that Ricky Schroeder had in The Champ, uh, Justin Henry had in Kramer vs. Kramer. Right. Uh, it's, that, it's that grounded reality. And sometimes I would have to remind Dakota, like, less, less, baby, less, right. less. And he would just back off till he thought he wasn't acting, and that's what I knew we needed. Good for you. Thanks. Because it came through on screen. Good, that's the job. With so many bots on set, with the scale of these robots, um, did anyone get hurt? Was there ever... These robots were completely nonviolent. They were remote controlled, puppeteered. Okay. And uh, no, they were, in fact, I was amazed at how much humanity we were able to communicate just by puppeteering shoulders and neck and chin. You know, Adam in particular, our hero robot, is so soulful, even though he has no face and he never talks. And that's all a tribute to the acting that the puppeteers did. Right. Now, you're no stranger to directing. You've done a ton of great films. Um, some of them I'm fans of, like Date Night. Thanks. Um, but nothing on this scope. Do you want to talk to me about the scope of this film and this story? Obviously, it's my first non-comedy. It's a big science fiction premise that required huge visual effects complexity. But most important to me was that redemption story, that underdog comeback. And I wanted the movie to be as humanist as it was spectacular. I wanted it to have big action, but more importantly, I wanted it to have big heart. Because I knew that if the movie was gonna to appeal to people other than boys, right. it needed to be more than just badass robo action. Heck yeah. And so that's really what I worked on the hardest, and that's been the most gratifying, is to see the emotional reaction that people have had to the movie. A ton of us, like I said, were talking and definitely got us emotionally. We're Good. like, doggone it, Good. they got me. Then I did my job. There you go. Um, the comparisons and similarities with Rocky are obviously clear. Um, I read that you were a huge Rocky fan, um, and I know there was a, a line um, where Zeus's handlers said something like, you know, whatever. He, what Zeus sees? He kills. He kills in Rocky IV. Yes, not quite the same line. But I know, destroys. Yeah, thank you, well done. <laughs> I have an assistant who does that line perfectly. He, um, I love those movies, Me man. Too. Even by the time we got to Rocky III with Clubber Lang and Rocky IV with Drago, yeah, they got a little pulpier, they got a little broader, I didn't care because they still got me. And I want movies as an audience member that don't allow me to just sit back with kind of a certain ironic distance. I want to participate in a movie emotionally and those Rocky movies did that successfully. Agreed. And if I've done 50% of that, in real steel, and if I can hook an audience in that kind of, just a human heartfelt way, that will be very, very gratifying. Do we need this story right now, an underdog story where you've got nothing to lose and everyone wanted to throw you away? Well, I know, I think, I think that in these times where people feel like st things are bleak, yeah. and how can things change, and can things not change, I think that we need to be reminded that these turnarounds are possible. I would agree with you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for Thanks. this film. Thanks. God bless. Pleasure. <laughs> That's all from Real Still. Thank you so much for watching. This is Denai Marari of Attagirl Entertainment. Please subscribe.